Hey everybody, find this place okay? Good. Pull up a seat, grab a sandwich, uh, I got some cold ones in the ASCII there. Hmm? No, no, go for it. Drink if you want. I personally have a full flask with me most days. Higher ups don't care. Well, I mean, they do, but just for the orientation, nobody gives a shit. You're gonna need it. Trust me. So without further ado, welcome to the containment psychiatry orientation. You're all here because you're going to be moving on from handing pills out to cubicle jockeys and giving rum-soaked MTF agents a shoulder to cry on to the wild world of providing psychiatric care to sapient humanoid SCP objects. To, you know, weird people and prison fatigues. Treating skips is a very different experience to treating our staff and much more difficult. Uh, first of all, the good news. You get paid substantially more as a containment psychiatrist than you do as a staff shrink. A lot more. Not yacht and mansion money, but none of your kids will ever need to pay for college, and you'll also be working with substantially fewer clients, usually just one or two, maybe three at the most, so you don't have to put in more work per client, but you'll still be on reduced hours compared to what you used to be doing. The position comes as a package deal with a substantial life insurance policy, which brings me to some downsides. As a containment psychiatrist, you won't be dealing with staff burnout from a comfortable office anymore. You're going to be a containment specialist on the front lines with our guards and MTF agents. This job has a similar mortality rate to them, even though you'll only ever be interacting with skips while they're contained or just before they breach. Let me ask you guys something. What do you think you were offered this job? <laughs> oh man, there's one in every group. Best of the best. <laughs> Yeah, right. You're gonna sit there, haven't done the shit you've done. Look me in the eyes and tell me you're one of the best of the best. Living up to every arrogant, stereotypical psychiatrist trope there is, aren't you? Hmm? No, yeah, we know. Don't feel bad, you're not alone. I mean, shit, that's why you get offered this job in the first place. Everybody in this room has done something that made the ethics committee gnash its teeth in fury. Some of you fucked your clients. Some of you sold drugs on the side. And some of you are just... Plain shitty psychs. I mean, you get picked up for this job because you're terrible psychiatrists, and that's... Well, that's the plain truth. Because you're unethical. And you know what? In this job, that's a big plus. So let me ask you another question. What do you think the point of this job is? And what's the point of giving these skips mental health care? <laughs> oh, another funny guy. No, your job is not to help them. I cannot stress that emphatically enough. In fact, if you ever find yourself possessed of a sincere desire to actually help any of your clients, report it to your supervisor. You'll be given a leave of absence to get your head together and reassign to other clients. You're a containment specialist. Your job is to contain SCP objects. Just like our guards or MTF agents, your job exists as part of the foundation because someone realizes that quiet, docile skips are easier to contain than skips on the verge of a nervous breakdown. I realize most of you won't know much about actual conprox, but here's the thing. Officially, a sapient humanoid SCP optic cannot be rated anything lower than Euclid, because there's no telling what they'll do once you get them in containment, but I think that's bullshit. In my opinion, a sapient humanoid SCP should never be rated anything lower than Keter. Why? Think about it. Think about what we do to these people. They don't get visitations, vacations, or parole. Most of them don't talk to anyone besides their guards and you for years and years, if not years. Decades after decade. And what do you think that does to a person? How do you think that affects their mental state? Put your hand down, that's a rhetorical question. <sighs> I've been doing this job for 10 years now, and I'll tell you what it does. It means they spend every hour of every day planning their escape, and they hate you. Stick someone in a little concrete box with nothing to do all day, and their every waking moment will be spent collecting information to plot a way out. Memorizing shit like when the guards change the layout of the site they're capped at and the schedules of other SCP objects that might help them. These guys are constantly on the lookout for even the slightest slip up that might give them the opportunity to make a break for it and if they were normal prisoners we could stop them with good guards and strong gates but these aren't normal prisoners. All it takes is for one of them to have one trick that they haven't pulled out yet and there could be a dozen dangerous weirdos wandering the halls and they are dangerous. They will kill you if they can find you. They hate us for what we do to them, and well, a lot of them would gleefully kill any Foundation personnel that got their paws on. 
And our job as containment psychiatrists is to short circuit that hatred. When you go into a session with one of your clients, your job is not to help them, it's to manipulate them, to make them docile, to sucker them into some good old fashioned Stockholm syndrome. Our good and noble profession harkens back to the cowboy era of psychiatry in the mid 20th century when the priority was on keeping patients quiet so you didn't have to deal with them. Straight jackets, drugs in the food, water cannons, that's what we're about. Your client's going to spend every one of their unoccupied moments looking for a way out? Put in a request to the site director. Give them an Xbox. Give them a DVD player. Fuck. Give them a Playboy. Give them something to do in their cell that won't help them get out. So they just sit there nice and quiet and fuck around instead of trying to do some heroic jailbreak. And any help your client receives from this is purely coincidental. It's a means to an end. You're going to sit in these sessions and your clients are going to tell you horror stories. They're going to tell you about how they've been standing on concrete for so long they've got chronic foot pain. They're going to cry into their arms while they tell you that they can't remember what their family's faces looked like or that they haven't spoke to a non-staff person in decades. And you're going to coo at them and you're going to pat their head and you're going to use active listening to make them feel better about it. You'll prescribe some antidepressants or recommend that they get some potted plants for their cell or some other bullshit. But you'll never actually help them because the only way to do that would be for them to breach containment and escape to the outside world. And you wouldn't be sitting here if you were kind enough to want to help them out. <laughs> the ethics committee? Ah, uh, yeah, that's a good one. Oh wait, you're, you're actually serious. Alright, well, here's the thing about the ethics committee. What we are for the skips, they are for the foundation. Kind of. The real purpose of the Ethics Committee is not to stop us from being unethical, it's to manage staff morale. The Foundation keeps innocent people locked up. We feed live babies to howling monsters. We send D-Class to their deaths daily and it starts to wear on you. The Ethics Committee just looks for ways for you to do those things It doesn't make you want to run screaming for the hills or curl up sobbing into the fetal position because if you did that, the skips you're containing might get out. Like, here's an example of a completely ethical containment. Somewhere in the Foundation there's this vampire, right? Like an Actual, honest-to-god vampire, eternal youth, weird sunlight allergy, the works. She isn't human, she can't turn you into one, but apart from that, she's the real deal. She shrugs off everything that isn't a stake through the heart and can tear through steel with her bare hands. So, you know how we keep her contained? A bunch of researchers found out that if you spill some rice in front of her, she's compelled to count them, each and every grain. She has to drop whatever she's doing to count them, and can't do anything else until she's finished. So we built a special cell. Every 90 seconds, a cup and a half of rice is dumped into it, and a special second cup of rice is on standby if she somehow makes it through the lot before the next lot gets dumped in. She's trapped. All she does all day is count rice. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. We don't give her the time to do anything else. We don't even stop when we shove a liter of blood in there once a fortnight to keep her alive. She hasn't managed to breach containment once in the last 30 years. When you walked by her cell, you could hear her wailing from the other end of the hall. The ethics committee got wind of this, though, and they leaped into action. They had the walls of her cell soundproofed. Remember, the Foundation does not allow any sapient humanoid SCP object to be classified as safe. We can't just push them into a storage locker, slap a padlock on it, and leave them there. But we would if we could. And yeah, you can have another beer. Well, hello there. My name is Jeremiah Sumerian, and I am sorry to say I believe this will be the last video I do for the Sherm's channel. I want to thank you, the viewers. I want to thank the Sherm for allowing me to post my videos up on his channel as well. And, uh, well, if you want to see more of my content, there will be a link in the description and there will be a link at the end of this video. Um, I've really enjoyed my time here, but uh, my own channel has kind of grown quite a bit since I first started, and... I, I need to focus more on it, so it was nice talking to you people, and hopefully I'll see you elsewhere. Bye.